In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Sunday, the 1st of September, 2024. It is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Church Yebi. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and verses 6 and 8. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there? that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 15. The response to the psalm is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? The second reading is taken from the letter of St. James, chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, Verses 21 to 27. My dearest brethren, every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, verses 14 and 15, and verses 21 to 23. At that time, when the Pharisees gathered together to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, Unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat 
unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many other traditions which they observe. The washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast the tradition of men. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him. But the things which come out of a man are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Every law must be hinged on divine law and must be for the good, for love and for charity to the individual and to the group. Every law must be hinged on divine law and must be for the good, for love and for charity to the individual and to the group. Dear friends in Christ, on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time Church Year B, we are invited to reflect on our attitude towards divine traditions, that is the laws of God, and human traditions, that is the laws of man, be they cultural or legislative. Is there a clash between divine laws and human laws? Are they opposed to each other? Do they contradict themselves? Is one superior over the other? In keeping one, does one automatically become an enemy to the other? In fact, someone had asked a question. Can a traditional ruler, a staunch traditional ruler, be a very fervent Christian? Supposing that both are opposed, how can you be a traditional ruler, expected to uphold the customs and traditions of your people, and at the same time, be a fervent Christian. So, is it that when you are a traditional ruler, you cannot be a good Christian? Are they opposed? Societies do have laws. For example, in some societies you find, parking cars at wrong places invites penalties. It is a law, and you must observe it in society. Institutions and groups also do have laws. We hear of bylaws, the statutes of this organization. Churches do have laws. The Catholic Church has laws. Laws of the church. Cultures have laws. We hear people say, according to our tradition, according to the customs of our people. God has his own laws, the commandments. Even individuals have personal laws that govern them. We hear some people say, my law is that I don't drink alcohol. My law is that I don't eat after six. Personal law. And they try to keep those laws for discipline. Laws are good because they moderate and regulate action. A lawless society breeds chaos and anarchy. God has no problem with laws. Be the cultural. Be the traditional. Be the personal, individual. Be the laws of the church. He has no problem. However, his worry is we tend to focus more on laws of man over his own laws. People meticulously observe human traditions and can kill for them. Yet, 
they break God's laws without a second thought. The Constitution says, according to our bylaws, and I tell you, group members will not as much as visit a bereaved person because bylaws do not permit them. But why should we give precedence to God's laws over and above human laws? Some people argue that before ever Christianity came, they had laws and those laws were hinged on morality. They knew it was wrong to disrespect elders. They knew it was wrong to take from another what did not belong to one. Boundary disputes were settled amicably in a traditional council and defaulters were asked to pay a fine for reconciliation. But it would seem Christianity came to destroy their customary and traditional laws, so they say. But not at all. They argue that before Christianity came, they had traditional laws and customs. But that is not true. Who came first? God had existed even before our traditional laws. And who made those traditional laws? Our forefathers. And can we claim that they existed before God? No. So you see, God came even before them. And even those traditional laws built on morality, ethics, and conscience all point to God. You cannot talk about morality without God. You cannot talk about ethics without God or a conscience without God. Therefore, all laws must be in line with divine law. No law is greater or above the divine law of love and charity. This is the reason many times Jesus scolded the Pharisees for being too legalistic with Judaic laws, customs, and traditions, like not touching blood, washing of hands before a meal, as to overlook charity to a fellow human being. That was a problem. A Jew will pass by and not come to the aid of a fellow brother Jew, beaten by thieves and left half dead. The parable of the Good Samaritan. Because the law says, if he touches blood, he becomes unclean. So he neglects the law of love of neighbor set by God, yet he obeys human laws. He fears to be a defaulter for human laws. He bypasses a brother in need. And he does not keep the law of God that says we should help and come to the assistance of our neighbors. The people complained that his apostles picked ears of corn and ate on the Sabbath, that he himself cured on the Sabbath, Another carried his mat on the Sabbath, forbidden by law. How could you walk on the Sabbath? But for Jesus, even laws of God should lead us towards love of God and neighbor. That is why he summarized the commandments to two, love of God and love of neighbor. Beloved, you cannot claim to be a Christian. You cannot claim to be law-abiding, keeping the commandments of God, if you do not love God and do not love your neighbor. You are a hypocrite. So if it means not observing the Sabbath, for the sake of love of neighbor, then there is no problem. Go on. Jesus himself broke the Sabbath law for the sake of love. And he asked them, Who among you will not take your ox or take your donkey to give them water from a well on a Sabbath? You can do that to animals. They want more of doing so to a fellow human being. Any law should be for love. The law should make us love God and love neighbor. Law that does not show love is a bad law. And many of our human laws are like that. Laws that do not focus on the good of the individual, rather, they seek to serve as some kind of hammer to nail and crucify. Many have left our groups, even in church, because of such man-made laws that are not charitable. Man-made laws that we insisted on much more than the, love of, the law of love. Some see laws to be very burdensome. The first reading tells us, keeping laws make us great. The laws make us great, and when we keep them, we become great. We show how well-mannered and disciplined we are when we keep the laws. So, beloved, keeping laws makes us great. The second reading says, according to St. James, religion that claims to be perfect is that kind of a religion that has laws that are meant for the good of neighbor and of God, like visiting orphans, treating widows well, and those are the corporal works of mercy. But you see, beloved, we worry about many other man-made laws. You did not pay your dues. For that reason, we will not visit you. We will not come for a condolence visit. 
Oh, this occasion, you did not attend. You wore the wrong uniform. Therefore, you shall pay a fine. We shall not come to you when you are bereaved. Oh, you did not sing in church. And we overlook the weightier matters of the law. How many of those leaders ask their faithful or their members, when last did you go to the sacrament of confession? When last did you give water to a thirsty person? When last did you receive Holy Communion worthily? Beloved, let us be very careful. On the last day, on Judgment Day, God will ask us about how much we kept His law, the law of love. I was thirsty and you gave me water. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick or in prison and you came and visited me. I was hungry and you fed me. Beloved, that is what He will ask us. If you like, Pay all the dues and do not do these laws of love of God and neighbor. You will miss heaven. If you like, keep all the bylaws and all the human-made laws. Beloved, if you do not love God and love neighbor, if all of that do not move you to show love for God and neighbor, you have just been wasting your time. Let us pray for that grace that we may be committed to love of God and love of neighbor. And every other law must be hinged on divine law. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sunday.